Hi, my name is Joseph Saley, and I'm back in the top eight for the CTWC. How does it feel to be the world champion? It's, a, it's absolutely a dream. Exactly one year later, back in this position, your second trophy. How sweet does this one feel? Amazing. Last year, I feel like I underperformed. Obviously, playing against Hoft, I early topped out several times. Of course, coming in as a challenger this year, I definitely feel like there's less pressure. There's more pressure on Dog, you know, as a defending champion. But for me, I feel just like a challenger coming in for the first time. And, you know, my goal is to win it all. Yeah, Joseph's a Tetris away from maxing out here. Boom, Tetris or Joseph max out. My favorite game during the bracket stage was versus Benji. I feel like he put on a really strong showing with that first 1.19 score. Benji takes the first round. Yeah, Benji with the 1.1 when Joseph topped out and going for the 1.2. If you're gonna ever beat someone like Joseph, what Benji just did is what you've gotta do. Of course, winning the entire tournament would mean so much to me. There's so many rollers nowadays, and of course, Dog and Andy are amazing tappers. So this would definitely be a well-earned win if I were to win. 1.03 for Joseph. I don't think Benji's going to be able to that catch up. He's, yeah, yeah, he's going to top out and Joseph is your bracket winner. I actually want to give a shout out to my roommates. They've been super supportive and of course my family back at home. They've also been watching on Twitch of course. As I'm recording this interview, I have actually got 400k from an 18 start with rolling and I feel like rolling is the next step in my journey so I'm really proud of that achievement. Most of my recent uh, sessions have just been rolling actually. So I haven't been really practicing for the tournament, but I guess after this interview, I will be. <laughs>I have Dog playing Tetris and I'm in the top 8 for CJBC. Last year, I was able to win the tournament by getting a reverse sweep against my brother Andy. He couldn't get it over there! He can't do it! Dog has taken it! He's made the comeback from down 0 and 2, and he is the we champion! Are, we have a new Tetris world champion! It's Dog! This year, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest, just because the amount of new players that are in the scene now and, you know, the amount of rollers. With the new play style, it was definitely a lot different this tournament. Since, since you're the world champion, you know, you have to you know, live up to the expectations uh, compared to, you know, being a rookie. One down Boom! The middle Get a roll, for Dog, kill screen, 1.27 million. What a game. Amazing score, amazing pace. The double 1.3 combined score with the record, that was actually crazy. It was actually really nerve wracking, you know, watching Puck on 29 to see if he could chase down. All oh, Dog can do is hit, he's got 1.3, oh, and he can't get points. it! He doesn't 10, have it! 10,000 points! Can you oh, believe it? Oh my goodness! Unbelievable 1.3 oh. by Poking Nerd, and he lost! I don't really have any certain training regimens I do. I just sort of, you know, practice for high scores, and that's basically it. I now have a 1.4, which is, I think, like, eighth in the world i think that's probably the best achievement i have right now it was great you know facing my brother in the finals last year just because it was like we were not expecting that whenever we signed up you know having that as the final two people and now this year that can't happen again uh, the most can happen is in the semi-finals but i think that's will be a crazy match if it does happen it would be great if i could take this home you know i really want to go two for two you know having two trophies that'd be pretty crazy thank you to my friends and family for supporting me here and hopefully i can take this one home Hi, I'm Nenu. I'm back in the top 8 for CTWC. In the last year CTWC, I did pretty great. I got 4th place somehow. And Nenu's gonna run away with that. What? 199,000 point difference. What a comeback. The tournament feels so different this year. Many players have improved a lot since last year. Many of them are changing playstyle to rolling. My playstyle more or less still the same. I haven't turned rolling. Maybe I learned a few useful adjustments for efficiency. My favorite game from the bracket stage probably was my first game against Hydran. I was not sure uh, that I can beat Hydran at that point because you know we already see what Hydran capable of. He scored 1.6 in the match but that game gave me a lot of confidence boost for the next game. So a 1.135 for Nenu. 1.135 is a target for Hydran. A long way to go. I don't think he's gonna have enough ammo to do it and uh, yeah, yeah he tops out. The new achievement that I'm really proud of is 
probably my second CTM win in May because finally I was able to win another CTM after like two years since my first. My training regimen, I mean, just play the game, practice for consistency. Maybe lately I've been focusing on aggressive play, making sure not to top out early because you know, max out or even 1.1 probably will not be enough for this year. For my friends and family, Uh, thanks for supporting me. To be honest, it's already exceed my goal for this year was top 16. Winning the whole tournament with this strong field would be very surprising for me. Hi, I'm Tetris Time, and this is my first time in the top 8 for CTWC. I first heard about CTWC in 2016. I was watching Jeff vs. Jonas. After that, I just saw the CTWC finals each year until in 2019, I saw a video that Game Scout made and I realized how cheap NESs actually were. I bought one for myself and I started playing. What's special about my hypertapping is I've been using it long before I played Tetris. Back when I used to play Minecraft, I used to use this technique called jitter clicking and then I inverted it into Tetris by getting a table and then making my own grip so I can hypertap as fast as I possibly can. I'm still going for 1.3 but I'd say that my achievement that I'm most proud of is a 1.2 against Ruins competitively in Classic Tetris Gauntlet. My favorite match in the bracket was definitely during Opox. I was down 2-0 but then I came back the first game by a good amount of points and then he topped out on 18. Then on the last game he made a miss drop. Ben with a fatal hang! Tetris time completes the reverse sweep! In order to be a great Tetris player, you need to have three great qualities. Consistency, fast taps, and to never give up. I've been in many situations where it's do or die. When I'm in a high dig on level 18, or even level 19, if I top out, then it's over. So I tap the pieces as gosh darn fast as I possibly can. I've been practicing as much as I could just for this top 8 match. I know that I need to mainly focus on my consistency, because my consistency is what got me here in the first place. Winning the whole tournament would mean a lot for me, especially since I'm a huge underdog. Tetris time will be part of the November 8th. A message for my friends and family is to keep on watching until I am eliminated. You can watch the other players if I'm eliminated. But if I'm down 2-0, you keep on watching, because I promise you, I can come back from that. Hey, I'm Huff, and I'm back in this top 8 for CTWC. How did I do last year? I did pretty good. I think I overperformed. You oh can't do it! He had a missed eye. top! Just like that. And Joseph. there it is! Ow. What was my journey in learning rolling? Cheese showed me in November-ish, late 2020, and it took me a few months on and off, but I got there. I learned it. It's good now. Oh, oh yes, oh, I have oh, 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 I was really willing to sacrifice this year for next year to be better, you know? I feel like I came in just on time, so that was good. Pretty happy with how I did so far. Oh, Huff hangs this line piece. Hangs another one, and they'll probably do it. Oh, he gets it over! Oh, oh my, my god. god. My favorite game was the first game against Sodium. That game was fun. It was pretty funny. CVS style drought here. The receipt just keeps on printing. No, I don't want a coupon for baby wipes. Give me my receipt, I want to leave and he finally gets out of it. Winning the tournament for me would be absolutely crazy. I get to stack the golden trophies. So this trophy, I got that from the WPL Claw in Ohio a few months ago. My latest achievement that I'm most proud of right now, I just got 300 lines from a 29 start. It might be a while before I do something better, so pretty happy with that. I want to shout out Puppyball Fan Club, the homies, my aunt again for getting me into Tetris. So my training regimen, I don't know. I just play like anywhere from like 30 minutes to two hours a day most of the time. Sometimes I play more. I, I have days where if I'm going ham, I go maybe even six hours. I just grind games and try to get good at them all the time. That's my favorite thing to do.
Hi, I'm Pixelandy, and I'm back in the CGMC Top 8. Last year, my bracket stages were actually pretty difficult. I was only expecting it to make, like, Top 16. Whenever I got to the Top 8, honestly, I was fine if I lost at that point. But, you know, I got all the way past Alan and Nenu to face my brother in the finals. Andy is wow. in the first round, but look at those scores! Double max out, double kill screen, Andy making it to 30. We are on a whole other level. This year, I was expecting to get Top 8. My opponents actually did really well. Acetine Effect knocked me into to loser's bracket, which was actually really scary for me. My favorite game from the bracket stage was definitely the last game against Asta. It was just so intense, and I accidentally burned the last line in that game, actually. I was trying to set up another Tetris, but then I burned into kill screen. But luckily, Asta also burned a little. There was only like a 40,000 point deficit at the end of the game. Andy does it! Double max out, and Dandy with the 3-0 completion coming all the way back, wow. winning two sets against Asta to qualify into the November Top 8, Andy is back where he belongs. My play style really hasn't changed a lot since last year. I'm still a hyper tapper, but I don't use dash nearly as often as I did because last CGFC I was kind of using dash for 18 and then switching to tap for 19, but now I just do tap all the way. Some achievements that I'm really proud of that I've gotten since last year are definitely my master's win, my recent gauntlet win as well. I also got a 1.3 since my last CGFC. I definitely want to face dog in the semifinals this year because I think that would just be just a really intense game. And it's not even the finals, too. I'm probably gonna have to go up against a roller or Joseph or Tetris time. So that would just be an insane match whoever gets by. And I'm really hyped for that match if it happens. My training regimen is just to play well, get high scores, make sure I don't die. And that's basically it. Thank you to my parents for supporting me. And of course, dog playing Tetris. You know, like we're both pushing each other's limits to try to get to the next stages of CTWC. So it's awesome. <laughs>Hi, I'm Tristop, and this is my first time in the top 8 for CTWC. I've been playing NES Tetris for around two and a half years. I first heard about the CTWC from Nick Robson's video about Trey Harrison playing Tetris Effect in 2018. After that, I went to the description and found the CTWC YouTube channel and just watched all the videos and got interested. My favorite game from the bracket stage was against Eric ICX. I had my best tournament performance for CTWC against him with a back-to-back 1.1, and it was generally the game where I felt the most confident playing. Tristop 1.18, Eric at 1.11. Not able to burn anymore. That's <laughs> <laughs> wow. To be a great classic touch player, I think you need to understand the board as a whole. You need to understand yourself as a player, your limits, how high it needs to be before you burn, how the board reacts to every piece. Usually my training regimen is just to, on the weekends, have like a one to two hour session. I usually use transition trainer, which you start at the 19 transition and go to kill screen. It's my favorite way to practice. I think what's special about my playing style is that I like to do adjustments and spins a lot. I'm kind of known for two adjustments in particular where you set up a S and a Z spin tuck with a T or an L. I don't know how to roll as good as other players like Huffer Ruins. I guess I just need to rely on my consistency to get me far. My goal for this tournament was just to get top eight. So winning the tournament would be an amazing experience. I'd like to thank my parents for always cheering me on. Getting to this point wouldn't be possible at all without their support. I'd like to thank some of my IRL friends who I've been friends since elementary school. They've always watched me play and supported me playing. So I got some of them to actually play Tetris. So I have something to talk about with them. So it's nice that they caught on to my hobby. And I'd like to thank all of the friends I've met through Tetris. I've met so many great people that I talked to so so much throughout my years as a Tetris player and I'm really grateful to have all of them. Hi, I'm Richie, and this is my first time in the top eight for CTWC. Tetris for Richie, here we go, the roller on 29. Oh, man, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> my first exposure to Tetris that made me kind of want to pick up the game was watching the 2018 CTWC finals. After seeing that, I was kind of inspired to take up the game. The event that kind of gave me the drive to want to pick up rolling was when I was watching the classic Tetris Open with Cheese versus Joseph, and Cheese scored the first ever competition, 1.3 million, with four Tetrises past the kill screen, which was something completely unheard of and unprecedented. So I kind of wanted to get on the train as early as possible. My practice regimen early 
on kind of consisted of playing exclusively 19-5 just over and over and over. My favorite game from the bracket stage was game four against Meme in the winner semifinals. I was pretty confident that one Tetris in the kill screen would give me the victory. So as soon as I hit kill screen, I built up for that Tetris. And at the last possible moment, the long bar came and I was able to get it over by the skin of my teeth. Ever since the bracket stage, my training regimen has been almost exclusively level 29 starts. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to develop what I believe is my biggest edge. Don't even bother going to check it. And another <laughs> one right there. Forget it, judges. He put the nail in the coffin. The achievement in NES Tetris that I'm the most proud of is scoring 700,000 points on the kill screen. This is because the 29 score is the only leaderboard category that I hold the number one spot in. There are two qualities that make a great Tetris player and it's very simple. The first quality is you have to enjoy the game of Tetris. And the second quality, which is the more important one, is you have to have a lot of free time. I would like to thank my parents for giving me the free time to play this game so much. I would also like to thank my cousins who watch my videos on YouTube and throw a lot of support behind me. Winning the tournament would be a great honor. Like Jonas and Harry and Joseph and Doc have been my idols this whole time. To see myself in their shoes, it's surreal and it would be a great honor.